Good afternoon. This is a meeting of the Northampton Public Works Commission. Today is Wednesday, August 19th. It's 5.30. Calling the meeting to order. Uh, the meeting is being recorded by Northampton Community Television. First item on the agenda is public comment. Do we have any today? Sure. Uh, I unfortunately missed your last meeting at JFK. How many other people missed it? Beautiful, beautiful summer afternoon. It's almost impossible to find that report for public consumption. The water department doesn't have it. This office doesn't seem to be able to provide it. It's not on their website. There is mention of it on YouTube, but it's in some school format that can be viewed on most uh, servers. So I'm just wondering what the uh, why it's not available. Okay. okay. All right, and the other thing is this whole public comment thing. I mean, since we've changed the name of these meetings and changed chairs, I feel like uh, it's a formality we go through, and thank you, and let's move on. Whereas in the past, there used to be some feedback and questions were raised, or whatever. So if we're looking for public input, what's the sense of putting public input in if there's no feedback from it? I don't know if that's just uncomfortable with how to deal with it or whether I'm too much of a pest or what. But Do you have other comments? I'll address that one if you have other ones. Uh, I guess, well, I have others, but I don't. If there's nothing going to happen. So my personal view on public comment is that if the commissioners hear something that they think that is appropriate for the commission to deal with, then um, I would expect them to ask that it be put on the agenda and we deal with it um, in that manner. Um, some of the comments that you've made lately um, are no longer within the purview of this commission. For example, a recent comment that I remember reading in reviewing minutes had to deal with um, the city council Public Works Committee, and and you were suggesting that the two groups should meet together. That's just not within our purview. So I I think it's more appropriately addressed to the that Public Works Committee. So what kind of public input are we looking for at this point in life? Well, you know that's a, that's that's a good question. You you can tell that we still. Um, don't have a clear mission on uh, scope for this commission. We have we have some uh, issues that we're tracking that we started as a board that we're continuing to participate in, um, and we're we're being updated um, on public works activities. But but I'm sure you realize we have no authority anymore. So that um, I'm not. Well, I I, I still remember the public. Yes. Other people okay. seem to agree with me when I talk to them. Mm -hmm. Is there's a confusion as to where the input is and where the output is from your commission? Are you advising the DPW? Is the DPW advising you? And if they do advise you, where does it go? I mean, many of these oh, things, many of these things here, you know, that you read on the agenda, seems to be the DPW telling you something. Right. But what are you supposed to do with it? Right. It, it, it's listed as an update, and, and my view, again, is that as long as the commission um, doesn't identify an issue with, with what's being done, I mean, we have multiple updates here, then it's, it's, a main, it's a means of keeping us informed so that at some point in the future, if we're asked to study a topic or offer an opinion, we're as current as we can be with public works activities. But I think our role, I think our role is clear in that we provide advice to the department, uh, but I think it's when requested. That's my view. So what have we been requested? Like anything? Uh, it's the last topic that I think of, that we have in front of us of, su of substance is preparation for the uh, the presentations regarding improvements to the wastewater treatment plant and the sewer collection system. 
Okay, how about this last meeting where we had the uh, water asset management plan? It seems like that's already been done. It's been done. All right. So, what was your role in that other than to present it to the public at a, at a supposed public meeting? That, that was the sole purpose of the meeting. But is that your role to be the presenter of policy or reports as, as an advisory board? If you are an advisory board, mm -hmm. what are you doing mm -hmm. presenting a thing to the public in that manner? I didn't follow the question. If the report was done for the DPW with no input from you, I would imagine. Well, it was a board, it was done for the Board of Public Works, actually. Right. So it was done when it was our responsibility. Was, past tense? Yes, yes. So now in the present tense, yes. what's your role in that? For that meeting, it was, it was to inform the public of, of the findings of that report. Couldn't the DPW have done that without you? Sure. We chose to do it at a Public Works Commission meeting. Okay, so that still gives me a big, a big question mark is what's your role, input or output? I think, I think it's, it's both. And it's not, you know, I, I suspect each of us has a slightly different idea of, of our role here. But now that we've been doing it for eight months, um, to me, it, it is to stay informed on public works issues and to be ready to deal with um, topics that the staff and the mayor need input on. And that doesn't involve the public in any way. I don't know why you say that because the meetings are open to the public. public yeah, but you know, if, if, if the public gives you input, Mm -hmm. and you just put it on the table and say someday we'll come back to it if we think it's important. What's the role of the public? The public is bringing you an issue of maybe public work service delivery. That's one of your missions I looked up on the internet. All right, so I'm asking you, where's the report for the public to read on this water management issue? So yeah, does, that go on, does that go on the table? No, Do I get an answer tonight? or? How does, it, how does it work? I, I, it's not real clear. It's not real clear. I think on that particular issue, I think we can get an answer. It'll be posted within about a week online and available. Okay. Well, that's, that's a month after the meeting happened. What's, what's but I, you do need to understand that, that public comment is, is primarily to provide input and not today tonight we've made an exception and we've had a dialogue that's run on now for eight minutes but i'm not sure it's it's helping the, the commission here and it so i i don't it's not my intent to engage in this kind of a discussion um with the public with whoever is here um and if we can address an issue quickly like jim did i think we'll do it but if we can't it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So next on the agenda, uh, we have minutes for approval, uh, minutes for the June 10th, 2015, and the July 22nd, 2015 meeting uh, were distributed. Um, they were not distributed for July 15th, which was the uh, Water Department report presentation. So we're going to table, suggest we table approval of those minutes and um, uh, consider approval of June 10 and July 22. So moved. Second. Uh, I provided comments on one to BJ. I mm -hmm. guess that was June 10. Yes. Um, didn't change the uh, meaning of the content of the minutes. So. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? All right. <coughs> Under new business, uh, item number one, Bridge Street Cemetery Preservation Committee. I assume this is something staff has. Oh, yes. 
I'll wake up now and bring you up to speed. <laughs> the uh, DPW signed a contract with Martha Lyon Landscape Architects to do a preservation plan for Bridge Street Cemetery, you probably all recall. We've been working the last several weeks with Martha to identify, um, I guess, people to serve on the preservation committee. And um, we were, when we s submitted the CPA grant application, we worked closely with the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. So we got some in input from Ward 3 folks about potential candidates. And we have we've since formed a committee um, of some seven or eight people, I guess, that will be meeting next Monday is the first meeting at 5.30 in this room. Um, so we're excited about finally getting the project moving and having Martha Lyon on board to help us come up with a preservation plan for the Bridge Street Cemetery. Um, there's been sort of other little discussions within the city about our other cemeteries and doing a similar preservation plan or other improvements to, um, to other cemeteries other cemeteries. West Barnes has come up recently um, with Councilor Mary on the barge asking questions and I think Rich Parcelity is going to be meeting with her shortly about that and then I think folks up in Florence are interested in the cemetery in the center. Um, but anyway the this commission with Martha Lyon on Bridge Street, the work will start um, on Monday night with the first meeting and then she did send around the schedule which we'll be talking talking um, about during that meeting. She's anticipating having the plan done in February of 2016, so um, a lot of work to do between now and then. Should be good. Does her schedule indicate how many meetings there'll be? Don't know. Um, there may be a couple of additional meetings and Martha was also suggesting that there be uh, at least one community-wide forum to present information about the plan and things, so we'll be trying to lay something out a little bit more in detail. Um, Rose Schmidt from this committee is serving on that, that committee. Her name has come up as someone who was interested in working on the cemetery. There's a, there's a, a lot of interesting aspects of it, historical and otherwise, that um, various names have come up through. Martha's recommendation on um, the city's historic commission and through historic Northampton. So I think we've got a wide range of people. I just keep telling everybody this is clearly outside my usual type of work. So I'm relying pretty heavily on Martha and uh, and the people that I've been talking to that know a lot more about the cemetery and the history and things to do. And Rich Parcelletti's been playing an important role. He's been you know, doing a great job taking care of the cemetery. There's a lot of the history too. That was funded with CPA funds? Um, a portion of it was funded with CPA and a portion of it was funded from the city's perpetual care fund. So it's good to know that for a study like this, which isn't a lot of money, that the city is supportive of doing a plan. And we may um, look at that, look at those funding sources for the other cemeteries. That's good. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> right, thanks, Jim. Uh, there are no topics that have been added since the uh, agenda was developed. Under old business, uh, one item, it's discussion of the strategy for preparation of the CWMP presentation. We got started on that um, with the Kleinfelder presentation a few weeks ago. And there were some ideas floated around, but I thought we ought to take a few minutes and talk about that with staff and, and to see if we can have any more thoughts on how this um, gets pulled together. So we did receive an edit of the presentation from Kleinfelder um, that we're still currently reviewing and going to be commenting on. They came up with a bunch of general comments from the Public Works Commission. One of them to better illustrate the wastewater treatment plant issues using more images and telling more stories on it. Uh, please plan to have the DPW about 10 minutes or so background to tell quote unquote stories about the plant. I met with Jim Zimmerman a few times on this and I'm actually going to tour the facility with he, uh, Dale Small and him on Friday morning to get some more in-depth knowledge of some issues that are down there. 
So I'll be able to do that in presentations. Um, they made some comments on it, some acting out some of the slides that were discussed that the, the commission felt were irrelevant or weren't necessary. Mm -hmm. They expanded on some of the comments also. So like I said, we do have a draft form, and once we go through it, we'll, we're happy to share with you for our other comments. Hopefully well prior to those meetings coming up on September, September 16th and September 30th. The other thing we received in the past week that you should be aware of was draft executive summaries and the draft interim report for the capital improvement plan from Kleinfelder. And those are still currently under review from, uh, from staff here. And once we have those comments incorporated, we'll send those out to you for review. This is all part of the final report that will come after the public hearings, just so you're aware of that. Okay. How long is the presentation anticipated to be? I can't imagine it going more than 90 minutes. I think, I think uh, I, the, the presentation that we saw was unnecessarily long. And a certain amount of it was, was devoted to something that has almost nothing to do with the plant, namely the, the on-site questions. And, and that's just not a topic of the meeting, as far as I know. What do you mean, David, by on-site? The, like, uh, Laurel Park and, and uh, oh, Pine. Mm -hmm. On-site treatment systems. Yeah, there, there, and there are several yeah. okay. areas, and I don't know how many hundred houses may, may be on uh, independent sewage, their own mm -hmm. sewage, but right. with, well, it's not a big number, yeah. and, and it's not a big problem, so I don't think it should even be mentioned, because we're focusing on the plan. Right. Yeah, it was an odd anecdote to, to add to the discussion in the way that they presented it, and I thought that it was, I thought, Based on my own knowledge of some of what they were uh, suggesting, I thought it was actually there's some errors there. I thought that, I thought that it was that it would, all it would do in a, in a public forum is is give people reason to question, you know, the credibility of the rest of the report. As I, as I did uh, also express the concern I had about the 30 percent uh, suggestion of population growth for crying out loud. I mean that was absurd. Yeah. And, and so I think that it was good that we had a dry run. Mm -hmm. and, and probably the things that are pointed out, they've no doubt noted, but they needed to to pull that in into something that's going to make more sense to people and they can relate to based on their own frame of reference. Because I I thought a lot of it was um, was I guess unnecessary to be nice. They've taken on a number of slides in this that they actually X out based on the last meeting that we had, and some small additions. I mean, you look at the the findings for the on-site wastewater needs analysis. It was part of the report. It was a whole study for itself and should have at least a slide or two dedicated that we looked at areas of concern and didn't find anything notable or right. maybe Lower Park was one exception to it, but it's really under private management out there too. It's nothing that we have ownership to. Or yeah, as, any as was Woodbridge and those other areas. I mean, right. it's, it's a private. So it's when we were setting this up with Client Club, we had asked specifically that they go through and address each task of the CWMP and <clears throat> put it in a presentation. Mm -hmm. That's why it came up as part of it. Is, right, yeah. It was one of the tasks that they looked at. Well, and it seemed to me that the presentation for updating the commission on their study was a different, had a different objective than what we present to the public. I hope so, because I mean, it, it, right. at the well, same time, we that, that's if they're doing it and we're still struggling with well, what input we provide on anything, I guess. But uh, right. but to the extent that. Uh, that they provide it to us, it should be, should pass the test with us. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, right. you know, being able to, you know, make you feel comfortable with the right. conclusions. No, I don't want to echo it. I mean, the, the growth rate, I think you commented on it. I just want to make sure that we change some assumptions as we're taking it to the public. Because that just... Well, if you're using that as a basis for making other suggestions for the needs of the future, then, I mean, on the basis of what? There's no, there's no pattern that would suggest that's been the case, and there's no reasons to assume. I mean, we're buying up all the developable land with CPA money in in the city, so <laughs> the chances of that happening are pretty slim. I think Jim had a good answer to that one. I don't know if you remember your good answer, but it was, it, 
as we replace components at the wastewater plant, um, you do need to make a check to make sure that there's adequate capacity. And the, the plant itself was designed for more flow than it receives. And so as we replace things, I think it's just a check to make sure that um, each piece that we're replacing is big enough. But it, it doesn't drive the project at all, in my view. I wouldn't think it would. I, I was glad to hear you saying that, that, that you're going to work with Jim and I don't know the other person. Dale Small. He's one of the operators down there. On documenting need, because I think that's, I think that's the crux of the whole thing. And, and I, I was also wondering if there was a place in here to talk about um, sort of the historical development of the system so that, that we get it established that the pipes have many of our pipes have been around for a hundred years that they were sized for uh, development conditions that are vastly different than what we have right now you know and and um, you know s some history and maybe it's in there about when the treatment plant was constructed and, and how we're living on borrowed time and there's a small blurb on the plant itself when it was originally constructed and updated yeah. 20 years ago and so on which I can expand on a verbal conversation yeah. with the, the audience also. And then photographs to to reinforce the need to mm -hmm. where we where it's a photograph photograph works. You know, certainly the buildings and the roofs and because uh, I think that's our goal here. I mean that's the tough nut is to to convince convince the public of what we've already been convinced of, and that is that we need to um, make very significant improvements to that facility in order to, to be able to continue to operate it. Are there other communities that are in a similar situation to us? I, I would think so. Little, Matt, you know, might be a little further along in the, in the process of upgrading or managing this issue? Can we find out what those communities might be? I, I think a lot of communities um, built their plants at about the same time. Mm -hmm. There was the need to build a primary treatment plant in the 60s. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure when we did ours. And then in the 70s, we were required to add secondary treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of plants tracked a similar schedule. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of federal money back then. Yeah, too. That's, that's what I was right. going to say, is, is that we forget how much federal investment there was and how well, little there between is. Between the now. state and the feds, it was 90%. Yeah. And if you look at the one of the slides in here on the expansion of the sewer collection system, it was the 70s and 80s where it just took off like a rocket ship and there was, I think, 70 or 80 percent money back then from the federal government. Mm -hmm. Can I make a redundant comment? Sure. <laughs> so in terms of growth, um, in, I think we would want to approach dealing with growth in the same way that the uh, utilities are dealing with growth, and that is to spend money on conservation first before they increase capacity or build a <coughs> power plant. Why would we want to expand the size of our wastewater treatment plant until we know that everybody has a low flow shower head and a 1.6 gallon flush toilet and all that other stuff? It would be probably much cheaper to make sure that was in place first and maybe fix a few cross connections. A few. I also agree with their growth thing. I remember visiting my grandparents when there was 29,000 people in this city and look at it today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. But they're a lot older. <laughs> yeah, I think they're all the same age. <laughs> they're just different faces. Can you remind us when the presentations are? I know you told us the, the 16th of September, yeah. 5.30 at the Senior Center on Conn Street. And September 30th, they're both Wednesday nights at 6:30 at JFK Community Room. And will the consultant be doing the presentation? Yes. And you will be participating in it That's to plan. provide local flavor. Is yep. that the okay. local flavor? Mm. <laughs> 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 An inappropriate <laughs> choice of words, perhaps. <laughs>
All right, well, I, th I think we'd all like to see the presentation once you feel it's in a yeah. state that, that it's appropriate Hopefully for us to we'll take a look at. we'll see something next week. Okay. And once the presentation happens, then what? That's a good question. I, th I think it's, it's I th David's right, I think it's, it sets the groundwork for um, constructing a budget that has adequate funds to uh, fund the first phase of the program. And budgets that then get fed into the enterprise fund planning process, capital improvement fund. Yeah, and, and ultimately rates. It also goes to DEP for review and final comment, if any, and gets a MEPA filing with it all signed. So public participation is a requirement of of the funding program yeah. with DEP. So we might not see a final approved plan to the end of the calendar year. I don't know what the schedule is when it goes into MEPA offhand. I can find out. Probably longer than that. Also, back, circling around back to Gary's comment about Focusing on conservation before we get too energetic about building additional capacity or maintaining capacity. Do we have any sense or any census of Northampton toilets to know how many are low flow? Or is there any way to know that? Well, there's um, building permits will tell you what the, the certain point they were required. So yeah. I don't remember what the date. So that, that they were required for new construction, yeah. but for retrofits. You were Retro upgrading your bathroom? Were I you required so. to upgrade to a so. low flow? Yeah, it would be a, a plumbing code yeah. change, which I think probably happened in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember. Do you remember? No, I don't. But we received a grant two years ago, three years ago, for low flow fixtures in all municipal buildings. So I think we exchanged So everyone should go to public buildings to take care of their business, is what you're saying. Conserve. <laughs> to conserve. <laughs> conserve. <laughs> Well, three years ago, we also were making um, low flow kits available for residents mm -hmm. for free. So Those were water. Those were uh, shower kits. They were shower and toilet tank uh, adjustment things. And mm -hmm. also toilet leak detection tests. Yeah. Dyes. A few things. A little kit with different things in there. As a practical matter, it doesn't make a lot, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference though, because the plant is oversized in terms of flows and loads, so not a big deal. And then the most of the sewers are of adequate size for handling sewage. It's the inflow that Gary was referring to where we have pipes that are, you know, we get surcharges in some areas mm -hmm. because of the pipes being undersized, but mm -hmm. that's more of a inflow, get the catch basin flow out of the pipe more so than, uh, than a fixture problem. Mm -hmm. But we've tried to focus on the on water savings from the water side of it, with you know we had increasing bills and we had water restrictions and things that we were ramping up a few years ago, and we were trying to do more, a little more education and outreach with the low flow kits and that sort of thing. But we could probably do more than we do. Is that a, a permit requirement, like the public input? Is it a permit requirement? Um, uh, I'm sorry. Whatever. What we well, about? Yeah. public input's a requirement for the study. For the study, I'm yes. sorry, study. Huh? But conservation isn't necessarily part of that. I mean, is the DEP required? Who are we sending this to? DEP? Yeah. So do they have a conservation requirement? I thought I'm aware of the wastewater. I think you're more tuned into drinking water supply. Yeah. I think the flow reduction um, issues that are likely to be discussed in this report have to do with um, extraneous sources of water. Stormwater. Stormwater, groundwater from sump pumps, and, um, and, and the study of our system indicated that using, you know, standard rules of thumb, we don't, most of our system doesn't have a lot of that extra flow in it extra infiltration. Except for stormwater. Well, stormwater is huge. King Street. Right. 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 All right, anything else on this topic? Okay. Um, 
under informational, uh, number one reuse committee, uh, since Roe is not here to discuss it, I think that's the reason why we're recommending it be tabled. All right, motion to table, number one. Second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stable. Uh, number two is contract update. And we have a copy of the contract sheet in front of us, and it was sent to us electronically. So I can go through this if you'd like. That'd be great. So the first one is Pulaski Park Civil Engineering for Electrical Utilities. This is design work to take the um, overhead utilities in the park underground, and this was paid for with the CPA funds. Second project was dam repairs, Upper Roberts Meadow Engineering for the breach. This is breaching the Upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir. This was for construction mm -hmm. and resident engineering services in the future. So this is something when we um, start taking on the dam, we'll need this service. That contract was signed as being paid through the water uh, enterprise fund. Next project was flood control stop log design, bidding, and construction. Uh, we had an inspection done of the stop log structures by Ty and Bond um, at the railroad and at Route 5 and found a number of deficiencies. Uh, they put that in a letter report to us with an estimated cost and now we've asked them to further that into a design bidding and construction document. It's replacing the anchors in the Route 5 uh, underneath the roadway that are severely corroded and poorly anchored mm -hmm. and replacing a number of the stop logs that have cracked and checked and warped. Next one is Roberts Meadow Brook Channel Improvements, change order number one. Uh, because of uh, bank impacts that are because of the, the stabilization project, we've had to file a MEPA on this, an uh, environmental notification form. So this is the cost that's associated with doing that work. Next one is Pleasant Street Corridor Improvements. This is a joint DPW planning board or Office of Planning and Development or Sustainability project. We're looking at um, bicycle and pedestrian improvements on Pleasant Street from Hockman Road to Hamden Avenue. And this had a funding split between Chapter 90 and local traffic mitigation funds. Um, like I said, it's between Hamden Ave and Hockman Road. We're completing 25% design plans now and uh, Wayne Fighting from the Office of Planning and Sustainability is hoping to get a public works grant for the work of about a little over a million dollars. The next contract was aluminum sulfate, which is a coagulant used at the water treatment plant. That's our annual usage at 18,600. The next two are state vehicles. Um, one is a spreader for doing winter uh, salt spreading on the back of one of our large trucks. And the second one is a turf tiger, which is a 51 inch skag mower for mowing uh, recreational playing fields. So the reason they say state vehicles because they come off the state contract list, so we don't have to do public bidding for them. Okay, that was my question. That's why. Uh, radio equipment maintenance. This is a chair between the Northampton Police Department and the Fire Department. It's about a $50,000 contract, and this is the DPW share for all divisions for all the portable and uh, truck radios that we have. Uh, the next one is the Red Pine Timber Harvest on Reservoir Road, stands 21 and 25. Um, this is another contract to continue the fight from the saving the um, Red Pine, or actually kicking down the Red Pine and hopefully knocking down the Red Pine scale that's out there too. Is this a cost to the city now? This is a cost to the city. Mm -hmm. At one point, weren't we getting money for this? I believe the first contract was a very small dollar amount. Yeah. until we discovered the red pine scale. It's actually been, uh, there's been a variety of contracts in different stands. Some of them have been zero dollar, um, mm -hmm. basically zero dollar contract that we have with Cotton for some work where it was a balance of things that had value and things that had no value. Right. And then up in the watershed there were some contracts where we were getting paid because we had included some timber that had value in addition to the red pine. Mm -hmm. So this, sort of, this has been a mix. This has been the I think the highest cost contract that we had, where we actually had to pay for some work to be done. But it's an important area to do now along Reservoir Road. All the trees are dying out there. <coughs> There's two on the second page that they're paying us for I the see. timber. But ah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. They're not going to hurt the poison ivy, are they? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some? <laughs> it's a native species. It sure is. Yeah. Goats don't. 
birds love it. It's better too. Next project is the Mountain Street Low Lift Pump Station <laughs> grant application. Um, as you probably recall, a few years ago, we set aside about $600,000 to put a backup emergency generator at the Mountain Street Reservoir. That uh, came after Hurricane Irene. Um, we've actually applied for a 75% reimbursable grant for FEMA on this. So I believe the total cost us is about $150,000 at the end of the day, if we get the grant. Uh, next contract was, next two contracts are for resident services. Um, these are basically engineering inspectors, uh, mainly because of our loss of our transportation engineer grant. We have one now and also various vacation schedules, schedules and the workload that we have. DPW staff just can't take it all. So we've asked uh, Sarah Campbell and Bob Mills from both professional engineers for their assistance this summer with limited contracts for work. Uh, Sarah Campbell will be work on, on pavement work op op operations and uh, flood control work. Uh, the Kingsbury contract that's currently doing the vegetative maintenance work on the Connecticut River levee system. And Bob Nelson will be working on Chapter 90 project, which is basically our paving, annual paving contract. The next one is the utility rate study uh, being split by water and sewer. Um, I'm working on a data request from the uh, consultant on that. If you recall, this is a request from the mayor. Um, after we proposed our last budget, he held a 0% rate increase and wanted to have this water sewer rate study done. So that money is going towards that. Next project is traffic control devices. These are a number of different projects we have across the city, uh, such as the school zone flashing lights on Bridge Road and a rapid rectangular flashing beacon up there at the Beach Street crossing. Also fixing some traffic loops we have in, in town that are damaged and non-functional. Uh, a dedicated, um, not dedicated, but a left turn signal from Main on Pleasant Street. Currently there is none. And audible uh, pedestrian signals at two main intersections down by the elderly housing projects. Next project is required from DEP as part of our solid waste permits, the Hannon Brook Biennial Inspection. We've been doing these for a number of years. Next project is water system above ground infrastructure inventory and assessment. This is a requirement that came out of the sanitary survey from DEP in 2015. They want us to inventory all our wells, PRVs, pumps, tanks, etc., and come up with an asset management plan for replacing them in a schedule of replacement. The next two, uh, we described a little bit earlier, we're actually being paid for some of the timber stands in these two contracts with Evergreen. The next one is resident services for water main improvements on Pine Street with Taven Howard. This was supplemental inspection uh, for Bob Nelstrom, who is doing the majority of the work out there uh, to help us move that project through. The next project is the Traffic Signal Engineering Construction Administration to Fussman O'Neill. This is for the project on the previous page that was called Traffic Control Devices. We don't have staff to do the shop door review or the inspection services at this moment. So we've asked Fuss O'Neill for their assistance on that. Next contract was Pulaski Park Underground Utilities for $212,000. Like I said, this is the above ground going to underground utilities through the park. And this is being paid from CPA funds. The next one is $71,000 to Granger's. Um, it's just equipment supplies from all divisions. So the water, sewer, uh, stormwater drain, streets division. We don't necessarily spend that much, but we just kind of divided it among so that they can order any supplies that they want. We just had to kind of guess how much each department was going to use. That's off a state contract also, or comms, so they call it comms buy. The next one is the repair to return activated sludge pumps. Uh, this was done under an emergency request through the Attorney General's office. Um, we had a pump down and we were getting quotes to fix it and the second pump went down. These pumps are from the original plant in 1978. There's a total of four of them. And so we asked the state for emergency procurement so we didn't have to go through chapter 149 bidding process and everything and we actually awarded a contract um, I think within four or five days to a local company to fix the two existing pumps. And then what we're going to do with the other two existing pumps, I think, I'm pretty sure we're just going to get them repaired under a normal bid. These are part of a $500,000 improvement under the P3 CIP program of the CWMP. There's um, 
replacing all the pumps and variable uh, frequency drives on them. So they're part of the five year plan, but came a little bit early. And the last one is the Con Street, Pleasant Street, Mount Tom water line replacement, change order number one. This grew out of um, basically a bunch of requests from MassDOT and their concerns, basically requests for information. So our engineer, Klein Don, had to do a little more research and answering than they originally contracted for. So it's a small change order for that work and services. Back on the previous page, utility rate study, what's the output there? The output would be a number of ways that we could look at water and sewer rates in the city. When the mayor looked at this, he was concerned about elderly and being able to pay their bills and the rates they're getting. Is it a tiered structure we want going forward so that maybe bigger businesses or heavier demand water users, sewer users would pay more than a tier one, which might be a homeowner? He wanted to explore all those options out there before he committed to a rate increase. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the uh, supplemental engineering services that we're um, providing, is that, is that uh, typical? I mean, is that something that we, is that a recurring a annually, uh, something that we, that we typically uh, have to uh, farm out because we can't be done in-house? Not paving operations, no. Majority of this is for paving operations or traffic control. You see in the other case, one with Fuss and O'Neill. Normally, this is something that our transportation engineer would have done a, a bulk of it. Or no, but I'm talking work. about the Sarah Campbell and Robert Melstrom. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I, I'm just wondering if there's $53,000 worth of engineering services that we're paying for. I thought I understood you to say because we were not able to provide that in-house given the mm -hmm. demands. I mean, uh, is, is that... Is that normal in the course of, a, of an average year, or is it just unique to the fact that we have uh, considerable Chapter 90 funds this year? Uh, we have considerable Chapter 90 funds, but also, uh, like Bob Mels or Robert Melson, he's been used like on the Bedford Street Pump Station project where we didn't have an engineer. It was cheaper than hiring Kleinfelder to be out here. Right. $65 an hour, I think that's his rate, versus 120 plus an hour from the yeah, well, it's not the, not Kleinfeld. I'm wondering. Well, I'm just wondering about the point of diminishing returns in terms of, of hiring somebody. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's unique this summer given the volume of work that we have and our ability to cover the projects that we have. So we balance the staff that we have to do inspection with either the firms that do the design or with someone like Bob, who's an independent engineer, or someone like Sarah. These contracts that you're seeing now are that are happening are a function of the size of the pavement contract this year, which is, you can see half the streets in town are ripped up right now. We need a couple of people doing those. And then we have people on vacation and with a, um, so we've got like a, num a number of moving parts. So having people like Sarah Campbell and Bob Melstrom allow us to, to move them from, from paving to a waterline job, from a waterline job to a sewer job. Bob has been covering different things for us. But I would say it's unique this summer because of the amount of contracts that we have. If we had this on every year, I see your point, we could add a staff person and really cover it yeah. easily, be more cost effective. But um, we don't, it's, it's, it's a unique summer. I don't know if it's going to be like this every year. I kind of, kind of hope not. Right. And is there a, I mean, <laughs> is there a, uh, is there a uh, staffing study being done as we speak uh, of, of the department? Um, there so is. Have well, you seen anything from Matrix yet on that? Right, but I mean, uh, ostensibly that would that would be something that would look at situations such as this mm -hmm. to to see if in fact um, it's a it's something that we have to anticipate uh, every year, or, or or if it is in fact as unusual as Jim's mm -hmm. suggesting, and then it wouldn't yeah. make sense to have a full time person if it's only going to be happening occasionally. Yeah, it depends on the amount of investment that we're doing and the types of projects and, yeah. and that sort of thing. But yeah, well, we, we I, I, I know we got a lot of road money this year. It's obviously being put to good use. Yeah. Um, what's the schedule for the cons construction on the Upper Roberts? I think, yeah. We're still 
getting permits for that project, and my best estimate at this point is a spring construction start on it. You wouldn't believe how difficult it is <coughs> when you have one regulator telling you to take a dam down and trying to get the permits from the other regulators to do so. <laughs> I think it'd be easier. It should be easier. It should be, that's correct. And then the other thought I had now, <coughs> as you talked about those return activated sludge pumps, Yes. that's, that's a, a nice anecdotal <laughs> piece of information for the presentation. It's on my list. Good. It's like putting new tires on a car before you throw the car away. I mean, that's because these are rebuilt. They're going to be rebuilt well, homes. Well, and, right? and I yeah. do think, you know, we're not at the end of the useful life. A lot of the stuff, we're beyond the end of the useful life, you know. And, and so it, we don't have the luxury of waiting five years and then worrying about it. We really need to it's a good example. Yeah, 30, what, 36 years they've been in service, 24 hours a day. Right. Yeah, that's heavy duty. Any other questions regarding contracts? Do we have the schedule for the utility rate study and then that might come be completed? I'm still working on collecting all the data. I can't imagine it would take me that long once we get them all the documents together. Mm -hmm. This one of my goals this week is try to get all that information done. We have a request into um, uh, IT department for a, what they're looking for is a data dump of a lot of information from units of water and sewer building activity. So, it still hasn't come back from the mayor's office. It's not approved yet. Right? Well, if you told me it is, you told me it's not. <laughs> We've started work without the contract. Should I say internal that work. Should I say that on camera? We haven't sent them any internal work. That's okay for us to start. Yes, it's internal work. Yes. Yeah. Salter may have a problem. It's 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 internal work. We haven't asked them to do anything. Like that. <laughs> so I guess I'm wondering when the study's supposed to be or scheduled to be delivered. I, I hear that you have some upfront work to do, but there's a date of. I don't recall offhand. I can imagine it would be a few months mm -hmm. once we give them all the data you're looking for. Right. But well in advance of the rate setting process for next year. That was the goal. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, next item is Pulaski Park update. The process of signing contracts with Mountain View, Lawn and Landscape, who's the low bidder on the project. $1.535 million. Um, probably, probably will be at least a couple of weeks before they start. But we, uh, we also had the Caracas contract, which was on this list for the underground utility work. There was a kickoff meeting or pre construction meeting with them next week. So there's some work going on sort of in the back slope of the park, taking a lot of the overhead utility poles out and getting the uh, utilities on the ground and your conduit and, um, and vaults. So there'll be there'll be a lot of activity happening, you know, in the next starting in the next couple of weeks and then through the fall and winter and into the spring. So So it sounds like the there were bonding issues regarding the low bidder because of his price and that got resolved uh, apparently. There were there were yeah, essentially there the uh, the low bidder's bank was asking for um, some additional due diligence before issuing bonds for the project. Um, and that was based on the fact that the low bidder, their bid was substantially lower than the other bids that were received. So that um, the, their the contractor's bank asked that they set up a meeting with the designer, Stimson, and then myself to review their bid, to review the project plans, to make sure that all the elements of the job were included in their quantity takeoffs and everything. That meeting went very well. They clearly had spent a lot of time putting together a very detailed bid that clearly understood what needed to be done. We couldn't see that they had missed anything. Mm -hmm. um, What's the percentage difference, just out of curiosity? Uh, it was about 300 grand and 1.5. Wow, 20%, yeah. 20%. So, wow. yeah, 20%. So, pretty big, pretty big number. So the good news is you won the bid. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news is you won the bid. <laughs> <laughs> they, the firm has an excellent reputation. We checked uh, other communities that they had built parks for, and uh, 
you know, rave reviews from everybody that we spoke with, and when we met with them, they clearly had explored every last little detail um, in preparing their bid, and maybe in ways that the other contractors didn't. And they, they were working on this thing from the first day that it was available. So I think it has a lot to do with their ability to, to put a good price together. Um, so we're pleased to have it to be working with this contractor because they do have a good reputation and the architect knows them. So other <coughs> elements of the phase two, the overlook um, expansion of the park, we um, submitted a state park grant application recently and uh, we're waiting to hear, probably here in the fall, about that and then we just submitted an eligibility form to go in front of CPA again for sort of some additional money for the expansion. So that grant is due in the beginning of September and then through the fall they'll have meetings and um, that sort of thing. So, Is that back work part of the current construction contract? Or do you have to rebuild it? No, yeah, it'll be a separate, separate thing. Yeah. Anything else on the park? Uh, last item on the agenda is a paving update. So, um, paving update, the rubberized chip steel has been put down on, um, let's see, part of Sylvester Road, part of Chesterfield Road, and part of Audubon Road at this point. Uh, Warner Brothers is currently working on the overlays and um, uh, mill and overlay options, like uh, yesterday they finished up at Chesterfield and Reservoir Roads, those have been redone now. Um, they have a number of town, or roads in the town milled, uh, Woodlawn, Massasoit, Milton, and a few others. Um, so basically, they're here, and hopefully within a month they'll be pretty much finished. Woodlawn was paved. Pardon me? Woodlawn is paved. Partial. Partial. Just the tail of my nose, isn't it? Oh, they were jackhammering okay. structures out, so they did a base coat and they're raising structures. Exactly. And they're gonna, yeah. Okay. You got it. So it's, it's going it's along well. Yeah. At the end of it, they'll come along and do all the line painting all at once. It's better with the structures in there. And also, it looks <laughs> like the slope part of Maple Street in Florence, they're going to probably do curb. Like the curb was removed there. The right, road. we're actually getting rid of that odd entry exit way at the bottom of the hill. Oh, really? It's going to be that. basically a T intersection. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 That'll, that's a lot of overdue. Well, that's a big That'll change. change a little confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you think of there? And we're doing some alterations at the intersection of Pine and Spring Street too. Shutting down that truck radius sweep going out towards the Elks Club up to Spring Street. Things like that. We're doing some modifications out there too. So we're trying to do some little traffic calming measures while we're doing roadway work too. And then with the Prospect uh, Street all the way down to um, Finn and, and King Street. That's all be done. We'll have bike lanes most of the way on that also. So we're trying to continue that bike lane connectivity also with our other projects. That's great. So um, from Woodlawn and um, Jackson Street up is a single bike lane. So going into town is it double? It's it's single bike. Lane. Yeah, it's on both sides. Uh, down through the YMCA is a share road. Share the road. That's right. After you get past the YMCA, going towards it will be. Uh, a lane all the way down to, I believe, Finn Street, then it becomes Sherrows again. I think what I was thinking about on the upstreet part is that there's parking between the curb and the bike lane heading towards the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there's only one bike lane, but it is on both sides. It is on both sides. Great. Tell me you put the parking on the sides where all the residents are. Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> the park side, yeah, right. <laughs> Anything else on paving? Um, that's it for the agenda. Go around. Gary, do you have anything else? No, it's great to see the paving going in. I mean, it was, they did a lot of grinding, and so it was weeks and weeks, and I know some people in my neighborhood were complaining about that. Good. <laughs> Give them something to do. <laughs> but they were very excited about the new paving that they witnessed going down yesterday. That? So, yeah, just a this on again, off again, water restriction. Um, I mean, is there, it seems odd that within a period of what, 10 days? Is it? 
I mean, I know that this is something that we have, we're, is kind of dealt to us, but um, it's hard for people to, to um, accept it as something of importance when it's forever changing under circumstances that don't always make sense visually. Mm -hmm. so, there we ask this again. <laughs> I know. And there's no answer to that. Okay, well, so all right. Answer, the, yeah. the mayor told us that we follow the rules so that if we can lift the restriction, we lift it. If we have to put it on, we put it on. And in the past, we just kept it on for the whole summer so we wouldn't have this flip flop yeah. on and off, on and off. The permit we have in the state's very poor policy, and I think that's your point. How do people understand? When do you know that they're it's critical that that the water restriction is well, how do you important. enforce it under those circumstances right. you know if someone were to be violating it right. you know I, mean, I don't know what, what, what's the what's the, how do you answer there i didn't i thought it was off i don't know what's on here and the first garbled message that came through was a little hard to understand though 10 days ago but this most recent one was much clearer and um and so i think that those things just i just hear a lot of people weighing in on that particular topic because it seems to be a source of uh, annoyance and confusion so i'll speak to the mayor about his about his uh desire to keep everybody uh informed of the changes but it just seems to me there ought to be something a little bit more obvious maybe we can use you know the flashing light that we have when there's no restriction on it so not using it in the summer when it's flashing put it on for the water restriction yeah that's a good idea yeah. 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 the sprinklers will go off <laughs> yeah, you're right no, i'm not going to bring it up again i'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> is there any way to change it it's on the website it's on the town's website i mean we talk to the governor and the you know, we can talk to DEP in the past about it. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really get very far. Um, if you read the reason for doing it, it would really get, the people who don't understand it would just get angry. I suspect if we went high enough up the food chain at DEP, we might be able to find someone reasonable enough to understand that's really poor policy. Yeah. Well, we haven't had a lot of luck in the past with the people that deal with the Foreign Management Act permits. They get real, real defensive and it's like, but isn't the new administration doing a review of all type of regulations? I mean, wasn't there this push that Governor Baker said, you know, do we really need this many regulations? Yeah. That was a significant part of the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's one. I mean, I think we've we've questioned this policy since the day it went in. <laughs> well, I, I think I see. The idea of water conservation makes a lot of sense, but mm -hmm. it, it's hard when you look at how it's done. It, it, it's not even in our drainage basin, so how do you really measure it? It's hard to measure, so we've always used the level of the reservoirs. But what the policy is all about is how dare we hold back all the water for us? What makes human beings more special than everything else? Because we, human beings, depend on everything else. Thumbs. Mm, that is what makes us different. <laughs> but by holding back the water, we are potentially harming the rest of the environment. And we depend on it. That's really what the driving, that's what the whole thing is behind it. We have two board members who have gone to considerable expense to try to, you know, but don't to switch it now. <laughs> <laughs> to sort this out. Both I mean, of I'm giving you an answer. The, the homeowner and the business owner, sense. and we've right. both gone to great lengths to deal with it. And honest to God, it's, um, you know. That's why they're doing it. Yeah. Ed, you have anything else? Sure, well, a quick announcement. Uh, two of our employees from the Water Division went to a winter truck operation safety day. And became the winners from Western Mass from the Tri County and the Berkshire County Highway Association, and then has to go to the state finals, which will happen sometime this fall in the mid part of the state. So, just want to announce that it was uh, Danny Dion and uh, Matt Wintel went. And they were recognized last week at the summer meeting of the Tri County Highway Superintendents, and it was nice that they were allowed to go down yeah. there and get that recognition. Yeah. So it was like a competition? 
there was a um, safety exam, um, a walk around a vehicle like you're going through a um, CDL inspection mm -hmm. for your driver's license, mm -hmm. and then ended up with a rodeo with cones and barricades and being able to move the truck around without hitting anything with a big plow on it. Mm. Mm. Nope. Fake snow plow? No fake snow. No fake snow. <laughs> Air, it's like air guitar, it's air snow. <laughs> it was to music too, wasn't it? Wasn't it to that I don't know, I wasn't there. Jim? Yeah. BJ? Well, thank you. MJ? I'm good. David? I'm good. I have two things. One is uh, we all received the uh, ordinance from the mayor regarding uh, inspection of sewers. Uh, at the time of uh, property transfer to make sure that they're in compliance with the city regulations. And it, has there been a request that we deal with that at this point? No. No. Okay. Fine. But I think it should have your input into it. I mean, it's something that we as a commission and us as staff probably have the most knowledge of it in the city. So sh shall we put it on the agenda for the next meeting? Sure. This, this is the info question. Right. No. Well, it could be related to inflow. It's it's is is the sewer connection legal? Does it comply with the city requirements? So, I I think inflow like sump pump connections or roof drain connections is part of it. Yeah. I think it should be. I think a big part of it too is to ensure to the homeowner that they're getting a somewhat quality service going in that they'd have ownership over too. Right. Although the quality of the pipe didn't seem to be an issue in the whatever town it was that we saw here. Did switch? Yes, I think it was in the Okay. All right. And then the um, the other item is uh, when do we hold our next meeting? Do we do the second Wednesday as normal? Do we have enough to warrant we'll a meeting? Well, that name on that calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be the 9th. You're going to have a meeting on the 16th and a meeting on the 30th. Well, Those are the public meetings, you mean? Yes. But we could have one on the 9th. Well, maybe we should because that's in advance of the first, first public mm -hmm. meeting. And that it would give us a chance to talk about the presentation. Is that going to be a JFK? Or is that at the night? Senior Center. Yeah. Senior Center. This one's at the Senior, senior Center, center 16th, 16th and the JFK on the 30th. Okay. So we can set one for the night? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We've got a September 9th, 16th, and 30th. Mm -hmm. Busy month. Well, we don't have the summer schedule. Just probably nice. take that off. If there's nothing else, we'll take a motion to adjourn. No move. Second. Favor, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.